Today I'm going to show you how to make your own macro. The macros are these buttons and knobs in the lower right hand corner of Avenger. The cool thing about macros is they can control several parameters at once. You can also assign the amount of value for each parameter that macro is controlling using the mod matrix. I'm not going to get super deep into the mod matrix today, but I'm going to show you enough to be able to make your own macros. They're really quite easy, so let's dive in. So the macro I'm going to create is for a pluck sound that is the dominant part of this sequence I'm going to play you. Um, I am modifying with the mod wheel right now uh, with some automation the filter cutoff, so you're going to hear it open up. But uh, that kind of makes the problem worse even, even though I like the energy I'm getting from that, because this pluck is really dominating the soundscape of the mix when the pad and the bass and the ARP all come in. Have a listen. So just to give you um, kind of a 10,000 foot view, these are all Avenger. The pad is the same instrument, it's just a higher part and a lower part and then they both play together. Um, all sounds that I made with the same kind of approach. You can see these dark lines are different kinds of uh, filtering automation going on. The ARP and uh, the lead. So let's open back up the Pluck Avenger. And I'm going to create a macro that says darker because that's how I'm going to get it to dip um, during that main passage, at least the first time through. And I'll open it up towards the end. So the first thing I'm going to automate with this macro is the equalizer in the master effects. So I'm going to click on that, but I really can't see super well what's going on. So I click open so that I have the view here. I really like that with the compressor, how you can do that. If you see, I'm going to leave these cuts alone because these are part of the sound design approach, but this high shelf is where I'm going to drag these dots from the macro over to the gain. I'm going to type in my value in the mod matrix here. I'll get more into the mod matrix in another tutorial, but I'm going to give you enough of an understanding how to go in here and set your control for your macro. So it's right here. You see macro one darker. I'm going to enter a value of minus 40. 40% uh, 40 are good increments for most things, 30 to 40%. Um, it varies, but uh, your mileage may vary, but that's a pretty good number to start off with. As you'll see, if I boost all the way, that high shelf becomes a low shelf, uh, oh, well, a, low, a high shelf cut. And um, it's the inverse, essentially, of the boost. And so I can start, that allows me to start in the middle. So listen again to my sequence and then I'll, I'll go brighter and then go darker when the main section comes in. So now it's getting darker, but I'm going to do a few other things. So it's getting out of the way, but it's kind of losing its drive a little bit. So the whole sequence loses its momentum. I'm going to keep that momentum driving without stepping on all the other instruments. So the first, the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the shaper up here. And the shaper has a bunch of different harmonic distortion sounds and two frequency bands to control them. So I've got a, a cut around 4K with the second band. Just to give it a bit of smear, I'm going to drag the controller to that knob for the shaper on the soft setting. And I'm going to enter a boost value here of 40. So that's plus 40. And um, now you'll see that I start in the middle. I'm already halfway. This orange ring indicates that it's being modified. So you see me go lower, you see me go higher. I'll start in the middle again 
and I'm just going to do the darker. I'm just going to boost the darkness. So um, you can hear right away that it's adding just a little bit of smear. Okay, I'm getting the smear, but now I've got two forms of cut. So I need to offset that a little bit with a volume automation on the oscillator level. And I find that plus 30 works really well. Now listen when I go bright and dark, I'm not losing my, uh, my volume. there. Um, the one thing that's still happening is when I go super dark, it's still not biting, cutting through quite enough. So I'm going to go up here to the release of the amplifier and I'm going to put a negative 40 value in now. And then I'm going to play the whole thing for you, automate the whole thing. But, what, but first have a quick listen to what that release cut is doing, re reducing the release. So now it's giving it a little more of a transient footprint as it punches through the rest of the sounds without stepping on everything frequency-wise because we've done our, our, high, our high shelf cut and our smear trick with the shaper. We've kept our volume steady so the energy doesn't dissipate. But to make sure that sound keeps really keeps driving, we've also automated all with one knob, with one macro, um, the uh, release of the amp. So I hope this has been helpful, giving you some ideas uh, to do your own, create your own macros. I started from scratch here. The sounds that you load in from the expansions have all their own macros. And if you expand the view, you'll see a lot of these are loaded. The whole screen will be loaded with them. Um, you can basically initialize that matrix and start over and really go to work once you understand how that works. And I'll get into that in, an, in another um, tutorial soon. So thanks for watching. I'm gonna play the whole sequence now Turn up the level just a little bit here, and I'm going to automate it live so you can hear basically how it turned out now, at least this section of a new song. Thanks for watching.